All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and kick off, Lynette. So uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. We're here to talk about uh, revolutionizing the HR operations at Hartford HealthCare with PeopleSoft eForms. I'm Stephen Mayano, um, uh, Hartford HealthCare, and I have Lynette Shawden from Gideon Taylor. Next slide. So uh, Hartford HealthCare, um, we're going to talk about a, a couple different areas. Um, first, we'll go into a little bit of the foundation and, and who we are. Um, we'll talk about the, the why we um, uh, chose this journey. Um, we'll see it with a demo. And then we'll talk a little bit about the value. And I'll conclude with Q&A. So who is Hartford HealthCare? Um, we're an integrated healthcare system uh, with just over 43 or 33,000 colleagues and just over 4 billion in operating revenue. Um, we operate primarily in the state of Connecticut. We have some operations in um, Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts, and um, uh, soon um, potentially uh, in New York, um, but primarily uh, here in the United States and the Northeast. We've been on the Oracle PeopleSoft platform since 2014. We're currently on the version 9.2. And for human capital management, Image 35, People Tools 8.58. And we also use it for supply chain management, Image 34, and People Tools 8.57. So our journey started in 2014. Um, at that time, our system was just forming a system support office. Um, and uh, we experienced our fair share of uh, chaos during that time. Um, but we did go live with, uh, with Oracle in 2014. Um, over the years, 2015 and 16, we were uh, really using uh, for any job changes, uh, manual forms, so paper forms, and um, having those submitted to our service center. Um, we uh, then initiated an electronic version form. Again, that form was all stagnant. Um, it allowed um, our users to email it in to our service center. Um, over time, we also added some drop downs, um, and we tried to limit some of the the uh, selections on the form, um, meaning you couldn't submit it uh, until certain things were filled out. But again, it was all static. You had to, um, uh, you had to either do a drop down or manually fill in the data. Uh, towards the, uh, the end of that period, we piloted our fluid technology from Oracle um, and uh, we went live with our company work chart and our address updates with our first release. And that has been the base um, for our self-service technology. In 2017, um, up through uh, recently, uh, we continue to add additional features. Um, we'd highly recommend uh, this technology from Oracle because it's also mobile ready. Um, and it's, uh, it's quite intuitive. The challenge that we still had was with our job changes. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. So we, um, next slide, yep, thank you. So um, we went to a conference in 2019 and uh, we met up with a vendor, Gideon Taylor. Um, we brought that information back to our organization um, and we started to learn more about it. We were looking to partner with someone that would completely disrupt and revolutionize the process we had today. We were making changes that were um, uh, slow, um, really not value add for our customers, um, and it was still far from intuitive. Uh, so we, uh, we launched um, with Gideon Taylor, and we'll talk more about that in, in just a moment. But the, the key benefits that we went live with within the HCM, um, you'll see when we go through our demo shortly, is it positions all the information on screen. Um, the challenges uh, that we were having is uh, our users 
uh, couldn't find the current information, which we were asking for on our form. Um, and then they weren't always exactly sure uh, what the options were to move it to. Um, and uh, we've, we've really revolutionized that process. Um, the ease of use for navigation, it's, it's really incredible um, what we've done here. Um, and I uh, can't wait for you guys to see that in just a moment. I think a game changer was the workflow. We had a lot of emails that were going back and forth, and um, we'll definitely talk about that, that workflow and how we improved that. And again, it was a table stake for us to have something that was uh, mobile ready um, and had the right uh, audit protocols in place. Um, finance supply chain is building out uh, functionality for, uh, for their business as well, and we'll talk about some of the things they're rolling out in a moment. Next slide. So transforming our process, um, we were very focused uh, on our employee status change form for our initial rollout. Um, uh, I've talked a little bit about the form. We use it for all job changes, so it's a pretty complex form um, for our users. And for our leaders that go into it, um, maybe not on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it's a constant learning experience. We, we really needed to change that process. So when we began partnering with Gideon Taylor, we kept the scope very tight on this one form exclusively for our initial rollout. We did have to prepare um, just a bit internally. So um, we had some data cleansing. Now data cleansing is ongoing. Um, it's, it's really a job that's never complete. Um, but we had to look at our action reasons. Um, we, uh, we cleaned up some of our action reasons before we went live. Um, there were, were some data fields we wanted to look at um, that we wanted to make it a little bit easier to go live with, and um, uh, we focused on that with our service center to, to handle some of that. Um, we also needed to reach out to some of our business partners on some processes. Um, we needed to let them know that we had something that was definitely going to um, change the process in a good way. Um, we needed to make sure they were on board before we did that. Um, and uh, we, we really sold uh, what was coming um, down the pike to them, and uh, we just had to do some of that legwork in advance. Um, and we did need to standardize some of our policies and set expectations with our managers um, in doing that. The design and modeling structure, so this was really about the experience and the look and feel um, versus not trying to mimic the current form that we have and simply put it in an electronic format. So. Um, our current form looks nothing like what you're about to see, um, and that was a very intentional design because uh, we, we needed to make a significant change. Next slide. So from a timeline perspective, um, we did some of that cleanup uh, prior to October. We wrapped up our contract negotiations, and uh, we were pretty excited to have our project kick off in October of 2020. So uh, we were making all of these decisions and advancing this project, uh, certainly in the midst of, of COVID, um, and we had executive buy-in to do so. In November, we began the modeling. Um, in December, we moved right into user acceptance testing, and we began to pilot in very early January. Um, from January until the end of February, I will say that Hartford Healthcare made an intentional decision not to um, uh, roll out at the end of January. The, the project team was ready to go. Um, we had some additional cleanup and we wanted to deliver the best product to our customers. Um, Gideon Taylor was uh, very flexible with us and they allowed us to do some additional user testing and make some very final um, minor enhancements. And we went live, um, a soft go live, at the end of February. Um, I'd like to hand it off to Lynette, and we'll talk a little bit about the project methodology. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so in looking at um, the solution that Hartford was trying to implement, um, as well as the timeline and the approach, uh, we landed on a project methodology that allowed us to also be flexible and controlled at the same time. Um, so going into the project, we wanted to have a pretty good idea of the scope, the cost, the duration, um, but we also didn't want to spend too much time up front in documenting the full design before we moved into the prototype phase and what's possible um, within the system and really getting to know the form and starting to use it. So 
Overall, um, we first did our discovery sessions. Um, in the discovery sessions, it was about a two to three week period of time where we had some intensive meetings just to go through, examine the current process. And like Steve said, they were very aware there were things that weren't working well for them today and they absolutely knew that they wanted to change. And so that was an opportunity to make sure that we documented all of those things that really needed to be fixed and what the goals of the project would be. Uh, we were able to map out all of the dependencies. So with any, any system or process, there's usually a lot of kind of subsystems that are out there or integrations. Um, we don't exist just kind of all on our own in a vacuum. So we could better identify all of those dependencies and things that we needed to be aware of in terms of integrating with various systems or business processes. Um, and overall, when we're in discovery, one of our main goals is to make people get uncomfortable so that they're completely out of that what I do today um, and challenge them to think beyond what's done today, what's the process today, but what could it be in the future, um, which can be unsettling, um, particularly for you know um, some of the payroll team. Um, and they were very good sports about this, but you know they live and breathe entering data into job data and processing these forms um, throughout the whole um, process. We were saying, but you know, can we can we really do something different? Does it have to be that way? So making sure that we were questioning everything, uh, we built a very early prototype. Uh, so that we could see what the form would look like in the new fluid solution and the people soft world. So we had all the pages um, and fields set up so we could actually use them during that initial setup. And then from there we made a plan or a roadmap to say this, these are the key things that we want to tackle in this solution. This is our budget. This is our timeline. So that could guide us as we were going through our more iterative approach. Um, the next step, it would be our development. And you can see we have our, our circle there um, where we cycle through. So we like to do um, break up into three main groupings for any business process that we implement. Um, for each of those groupings, we go through a cycle where we design, we develop, we model, we finalize, and then we move to the next step. So we started with the fields, the pages, and any updates to PeopleSoft that we needed to make. Um, which is done via the component interface. And we went through some design sessions. Uh, we went out and we developed to maybe the 70-80%. Um, and then we came back and modeled it to the Hartford team so they could give us feedback and say how it's looking. And we planned in time at that point to adjust the design um, because it's a lot harder to, to spot the places where things won't work when you're working off a paper design document and trying to read, you know, a Word doc and make it make sense to you. So once it kind of comes to life and we can actually use the form, we get really great feedback. And then we'll finalize the design of that phase. Our next phase is the logic or the brains of the form. So anytime we want you know, field A changes, field B should be populated with this. Um, we want to hide and show things so that they're only showing when it's relevant to the user or the particular business process, but we don't need to show any information um, or make people select things that, um, one, they could get wrong if we can calculate it, let's do that um, and not ask them to try to guess the right answer. Um, and two, if they don't need to see it, hide it from the page so it's really simple. When we design, develop, model, and finalize there as well. And then the final phase is where we come in and say, okay, what's the workflow of the form? How does this need to route? What approvals are needed? Who needs to know that it's in process? So we're sending out notifications at the right time in the process. And then designing what the navigation and the security needs are for the form. Um, and that's really kind of tying into the Fluid homepages, creating the Fluid tile, and making sure that uh, once this process was done, it, it felt very seamless for the users when they're inside of PeopleSoft for them to navigate and get around and process a transaction. So after we did that third cycle of the design, develop, um, model, and finalize, then we moved into the migration, which is pretty standard, migrated up to the next environment, um, ensured that we had everything in the migration, and then we launched into the UAT phase. Um, and Steve had talked a little bit about in UAT, we got uh, into there, and then as um, it opened up to a bigger uh, test group. 
uh, we found some um, great enhancements that we identified that could make the process run even smoother um, and easier prior to go live. So we did an extra cycle of development within there to add in some new features and then move to the go live. Um, and they started with a pilot group um, for the initial go live when they rolled it out just to make sure everything was ready before opening it up to everyone um, and had kind of the all-in phase there. Thanks for that. So some of the things that we were, we were really looking to solve for, um, our, our, our transactions were, were very complex. They are complex. Um, and we were finding in a lot of our our analytics that our users were selecting the wrong um, action and action reasons. So um, we actually built into this process um, uh, something that I uh, haven't seen before. And, and, and honestly, when I first heard about it, I wasn't sure it was possible. Um, but we'll be able to see in, in, in the demo, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end, um, really a, a dynamic way for the action and the action reason to be selected by the application. So um, our users don't need to select that for 98% of what they um, submit through this process now, and it's, it's really incredible. Um, uh, the limited staff and competing priorities, this, uh, as I mentioned, was in the midst of COVID, um, and uh, we really only had three primary people, um, I'll say, working on this. Um, uh, my manager here in the service center, um, we had our um, IT counterpart, um, and then really I guess I would be the, the, the third person at Hartford Healthcare, and I was really flying in and out, um, just making sure that uh, we, were, we were on track. Um, so it did not take a heavy lift um, from a staffing perspective uh, or resource perspective at all. Um, which allowed us to, uh, to keep things moving forward in terms of our day-to-day -day and, uh, and also move forward with this uh, very successful project. Um, on the strategy side, so we, um, uh, we had a very tight charter and scope, um, and uh, we had very frequent two-way communications. Uh, we were meeting almost every day, um, I would say certainly a couple times a week, with, uh, with Gideon Taylor and with some of our internal business partners um, to keep things moving along. Um, I made sure that uh, we either had a manager uh, or a director on, uh, on each call so we can keep decisions moving along. Um, we actually uh, set a standard that we would have decisions made within 24 hours. Um, for 80% of those um, items that needed it, which, which did at times mean that there were, you know, some after-hour uh, quick 15-minute calls, um, but it allowed both uh, Gideon Taylor and ourselves to stay on track um, and, uh, and not get roadblocks. So, uh, so I think with the right foundational setup, we were able to, uh, to deliver this in a pretty tight time frame. Uh, so next, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Lynette. We're going to go through uh, a demo of uh, what we developed. All right. Uh, so hopefully this is looking familiar to all of you. Uh, it's a PeopleSoft homepage here. Um, the homepage already existed at the Hartford um, system when we arrived. Um, and we went ahead and added uh, this tile here that we'll see um, so that users could uh, easily find any forms that are built within the system. Um, once they open up this tile, it's opening into a fluid dashboard where there's some additional tiles. You can see there's two different tiles here. Um, so we implemented the job change form. And one thing that we didn't mention in that, the limited staffing that was available, um, the Hartford team was also tackling a second form in parallel as we were building it. So that's what that the payroll eForms tile takes them to um, a second form that was developed. Um, so once the tile is clicked, over on the left-hand side, you see your fluid navigation panel. Um, the first page that you land on was something that Hartford really worked hard to make sure that it was providing the right information. So it's a rich text page where they could add in any instructions and branding um, for the user as they're trying to transition. So, um, the list below the grid that you're seeing is because um, they couldn't tackle everything at once. Um, there were certainly paper forms still that are left um, that hopefully, you know, as they progress, they'll 
get those online as well. But we wanted to try to make it easy for the user if they weren't supposed to be doing that change within this form. There's those easy links right here where it then opens up the paper form that's currently available. And as those come online, we can easily change out the links so that people have a good landing page and where things should start from. The first thing we do is come to a search page. We entered in just the EMPL ID um, because we wanted to make sure that we didn't expose any personal data. But on that search page, you can see information um, and filter and sort to make sure that you're finding the right employee. Um, it's restricted in a number of ways. So there's admin users who have access to everyone. There's users who only have access based on their department security um, and some other structures within the system. So it will really limit to only those that you should have access to. Um, up in the top, you can see there's a header up there for Barbara Marley um, and uh, her employee ID and the record. Um, you'll also see that there's this view job data modal page here. So when this pops open, it shows all of the current information for Barbara today in case you need to just review it and make sure that it looks good. So just being able to query and see this data is a big win just for users in general because there wasn't really a portal for them to go in and say, oh, I need to find out details about Barbara's job. So they can easily come in here and just open it. If they don't need to change anything, they can just leave the form and go about their way. Um, from there, we have the instructional information up at the top. There's some links that go out to documentation to help if anyone needs some additional guidance in terms of selecting the fields. And then um, this view that we're seeing right now um, is as an admin user. Um, and so this shows some of the additional fields that we're calculating behind the scenes. We'll do a second walkthrough of the form so that you can see what it would look like for an employee and the even more simplified version. But this allows you to see some of the default that we're doing here. So when something like the business unit is changed, if there's any fields that are no longer valid, like the department, it will blank the department out and prompt the user that they must select something. You can also see that the company was populated in when the business unit was populated. And as the location code is entered, the establishment ID is populated in there. Um, and then some additional information, like when the job code is entered, um, then we can go ahead and populate in things like union code on the form as well. Um, the um, toggles that you're seeing here on the form, you see them in, um, these main areas having to do with department location and job code. For Hartford, there was a reasonable number of times where users actually needed to request a new department or a new location or a new job code. And we wanted to have that integrated seamlessly into the process. So that ties into the workflow. So for this form, if I'm requesting a new department, it then routes to the appropriate people who are in charge of building a new department. And I can put in, yes, I want to request a new one give some detail about the new department that's required, and then it will route so the new department can be created by that person, or they could say, no, this isn't a new department, I'll just select the department for you, um, or they can recycle it back to the user for more information if they need. As we scroll down the form here, we see some additional information like supervisor ID, um, work at home days, some work period information, and then we can move to the next page. We have some information about standard hours up here, and then there's two segments that users can conditionally show by toggling them on and off. So one is the ability to have multiple components of pay um, in addition to the base rate. So people don't always have to see that on the form. They could go through a very basic form that would be really quick and show less information if they don't need it. Um, and then also the earnings distribution is not required for all of their employees. But for the ones where the distribution is split in many different ways, they can go ahead and turn that on as well. For any employees who already have multiple components of pay or earnings distribution, those default to on so that you can just see them right away um, before um, having to toggle those on. And then we have a special chrono section here. This is a customization that Hartford has on their job data page where they're storing some information that is then integrated with their Kronos timekeeping system. So when we come to the second page, one of the really big areas um, from their current paper form that they just really struggled with and 
I think the the per accuracy percentage that we gave during our discovery meetings was something like 10-15% of the time users actually picked the right effective date. Um, and they said most often people would just leave it blank and they'd have to, you know, call them up or have a conversation with them about what the effective date should be. Um, so Hartford has, based on the action and the reason and the form, um, there's certain rules that, say, that, that will say this action and reason has to be at the first of the pay period. You can't do a mid-pay period change for these types of things. Other transactions require it has to be a Sunday, but maybe not the first Sunday of the pay period. And then there are some more basic transactions, like a change of a supervisor ID that can really happen on any day at all. Um, so what we did is we built a setup table where we map the action and the reason, and then they can indicate based on that action reason if it has to happen um, at the beginning of the pay period on a Sunday, if it can happen any day at all. And so there's a lot of flexibility for them to change that um, or add new action reasons as they come online. Um, and then because you can see down in this, section here, we have our action reason grid, and when we click off of this, you'll be able to see it a little more and how it was calculated. But based on the changes that we made in the form as we were going through it, the system said, oh, you changed these fields, so we know it's these actions and reasons. And Hartford uses multiple action reasons when they insert the effective dated row um, for um, multiple effective sequences. So you can see this one transaction resulted in four action and reason combinations, but the user didn't ever have to know anything about that. So based on the action reason grid, we're now populating a list of only valid values for that effective date for the user to select from. So instead of having to guess or know all of these rules, we we're just saying, here's the dates you can pick from, go ahead and pick the right one. Um, of course, you know, policies are great and rules are great, but it seems like when it comes to job data and things like that, there's always, you know, the, well, but, you know, every once in a while we have this edge case. Um, so in addition to prompting them to pick an, uh, an effective date that's valid, they could also request a special effective date, um, meaning that they're saying, well, yeah, this is the date that I would use, but I would prefer to use this one. So when that's toggled on, they can select any date at all. And what happens is that routes through um, to the administrators of the form when they receive this, and they can review it, and then they can say, yes, I'm going to let you use that special date. Um, and then they can be aware of, oh, you know, any we might need to go and check payroll or do some manual adjustments there. Or they can select, no, they're not approving that special date request, which would then mean that in the system they could um, just keep the, the date, the effective date that they first selected that's one of those valid ones. So now you can see the action reason grid. We actually don't show this to base users. We only show it to the administrative users. So now people across Hartford never have to hear the word action reason. They don't have to know that PeopleSoft term. We don't need to train them up on it. Um, they just can go through and fill out the form in its entirety, and we hide this section from them. But as it routes, you can see that information in the system. There's a section where they can um, attach some optional file attachments, and in some cases there might be a required attachment depending on what's in the system and what they're requesting to change. So I'm going to walk through this just one more time, one more view, um, but this one will let you see the difference between um, what the admin was seeing and some of those extra fields that were in the system, and then how basic and simple it really can be for the end user that comes in and is filling out the form. Um, so again, we'll just click on the form, do a search. We're going to search by Ample ID here. Um, we open up that same form. And one cool thing to note about the form is getting all of the fields on the page and the grids and the various pages that you're seeing is all configuration based. So this form is about 70% configuration based and things like um, uh, populating the action and reason and then doing the component interface at the end into job data um, are some of the technical pieces that were added into the form. So you can see this user doesn't see that company or the establishment ID that got defaulted in. Um, it's a very basic form and if I'm coming in and I just know I need to change the job code for a particular person. I can easily scroll down to the job code field 
and just fill in that information and I only get the valid values that I should be able to select to move this person into the job code. And then depending on which job code I pick, it will conditionally show the right fields for the user. So um, if it's a union job code, we see this union section shows up. It automatically tells us what union the person's in. Um, but if I pick a job code that's a non-union, then we hide that section because it's not relevant for this transaction. Then the user can just look at the hours, the Kronos information, skip right past that there to the effective date where they pick the effective date. You see they aren't seeing the action in the reason grid because it's hidden behind the scenes. They don't need that level of complexity. It doesn't really mean anything to them. They just want to make a job code change. Um, so you can pick different effective dates as you're going through um, and change those up. Again, there's the request a special date that you can toggle to yes and request it that we already saw the file attachment and then the submit. One thing that we'll see on the submit is um, also on the setup table that I was talking about for the effective date. Um, based on the action and the reason, different effective dates are required, but also based on the action and reason. There's checkboxes for, um, I think there's maybe like six or seven workflow steps, but we know that some transactions, like maybe a supervisor change, um, don't require the same level of approvals as a compensation change. So based on those actions and reasons, um, they can easily set up within the system and say it needs to go to this workflow step or it can be skipped if that action reason isn't there. Um, so here you're seeing for this job code change um, where in their old process it always had to follow the same approval. Um, this is only requiring one single approval from the lifecycle team to then be pushed into the system. So changes are getting in there very quickly um, and, and there isn't a really big delay, but we're also sending out notifications as we go through the process as well. So people can stay in the loop and we're letting those that need to know things, we let them know, but we don't let them hold up the process because they don't have the ability to deny it. And that is the end of my um, the demo. Um, I was just checking to see if there are any questions that you wanted to look at the demo anymore. Um, but I don't see any out there right now. So I'll talk through just some, some highlights for us that we, we, as we were in the process, you know, kind of feedback that we got that we felt like this is a really big win. Um, and since Go Live, um, there are things that, that Steve um, and his team have also shared with us as well um, that have worked really well for them. Um, so I already mentioned it during the demo, but the limiting and the suggestion, the suggesting effective dates was a really big win because it was something that even the internal processing team, um, not all of them knew the rules of what effective dates could be used. So just going through that exercise of saying, you know, how do we know what a valid effective date is? Um, and then finding out that we could base it off of action reason um, and really prompt it was a big win for us. Um, allowing that flexibility of write-ins um, because there's different areas that handle department or different areas for a new location or a new job code. So providing a flexible way that those could route right to the area and right in line in the form, they can just then say, okay, new department's created, here's what your new department is. New location, here's what it is. New job code. And those things can happen um, in parallel, so they can be working on them at the same time to speed up the process um, and get those into the system. The conditional showing of segments um, that we showed where um, some of the Kronos setup isn't needed for everyone, um, or the components of pay, or the funding distribution, or the union code, um, really simplifies the form so that sometimes if it's a complex employee, people may see you know, two full pages, and if it's not a complex employee, maybe they see two very short pages so that they can submit. Um, and then hiding the fields that we default um, and really simplifying what people have to fill in so that if they don't need to be trained on PeopleSoft terminology and what it means, um, that just makes their day easier and it makes the form more, more intuitive. So instead of asking them at the beginning of the form to say, well, tell me what your action and your reason code is, we're just saying, you know, hey, tell us what you want to change about this employee. Defaulting in the company, 
Um, the pay frequency is also defaulted in um, as they're uh, selecting information, the union code, and then the full and the part-time status, which means that from that data cleanup perspective that Steve had mentioned um, earlier, uh, we've now standardized and we've taught a robot how to always click the right value. So um, it, it will improve over the long term um, and ensure that we have the correct information within um, the job data tables um, in PeopleSoft. And then the setup table that we created um, to manage the workflow requirements as well as the effective date rules was another big win um, because it really makes it very flexible um, and the manager of the life cycle team could go in, you know, today and say, oh, wow, we realized this transaction, like, we're not really doing anything with it to approve it. We're just, you know, pushing paper. I don't want to even see it. I just want it to go into the system. And she has full control over changing that and checking and unchecking buttons um, so that she can really um, learn from the process and adjust quickly and easily as she goes through. Great, thanks, Lynette. Uh, now, just a reminder: if you do have any questions, please uh, please chat, and, and we'll uh, keep an eye on that. So, um, yeah, we had a we had a lot of big wins here. So, as Lynette went through, you see the action reasons. I, I, again, I can tell you that our, our users are end users, so we're really challenged with selecting the right ones. Um, the ability to code that in and uh, and pull that away from what they need to worry about was was huge. Um, when I first came on board, our, our CAO, um, actually, one of my first projects was to go through our action reasons uh, a few years ago um, and try to consolidate them because of the challenges they were having. Um, so we did some cleanup there, but this was uh, a huge move, and, and I can tell you she's uh, extremely happy that uh, our reports are better and our users uh, no longer need to uh, remember all the various combinations. Uh, the system now does that for us. Mobile ready, um, uh, our leaders needed to have flexibility. Uh, we can't have them tethered to laptops and desktops. Um, so uh, while it's certainly uh, probably easier from a visual perspective to fill this out on a, on a larger monitor, um, in a crunch you can absolutely do it on a, on a tablet or um, on your phone, and uh, we just needed to have that flexibility, so we're really happy. Um, that, we, that we have this functionality available for them uh, wherever they are and on whatever device they have. The automated workflow is, is saving time. It's saving emails, and, and that's where the time savings is. Um, uh, again, the, the electronic forms, the paper forms that we first started with, uh, those were all going into an inbox. They were getting to our lifecycle team. Uh, our lifecycle team would review it have questions, a lot of emails back and forth to get one transaction submitted. Um, we've eliminated um, a lot of that because the automated workflow will send it to the areas that need to review it. And the coding that we, was built into the system um, eliminates a lot of the errors. Um, there's no missing fields. The selections they're making are appropriate selections um, from the, the bucket of options that they have. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's just been tremendous for us. Um, pay rate changes, we have a, a rule here that uh, pay rate changes need to be um, reviewed by, uh, by two levels. So our vice presidents and our compensation would have to review all of those. Um, so you can just imagine the amount of emails. Now it goes right into their inboxes, and, um, and they could uh, review it, um, uh, approve, hold, deny, um, they have different options if they needed more info. So we really like that flexibility, and uh, we're loving uh, having less emails for sure. Um, as you saw in the demo, it is simple and easy for the, the end user. Um, not only does the form itself pre-fill all the existing fields, um, which they did not have in our prior versions, um, it uh, easily side-by-side -side allows them to input what that new field is, and it highlights it in yellow. So if they need to go back and kind of check their work before, um, it's very easy for, for them to see it. Um, and then on, on the back end, in our, our processing area and our lifecycle team, um, they also will see those, those yellow areas so they can quickly go through the forms um, for the ones they need to look at and, uh, and quickly see what the changes are. Um, review it and, uh, and submit it. 
So um, again, very simple and easy to use. I can tell you, you'll, you'll kind of see on the next page, some feedback that we received from our folks, but I, I think a lot of it is because of that. Um, and this last one is really a plug um, from me. So we, we created a host of, of different um, slide decks uh, and we put it in our learning center for the tool. Um, I can tell you they're not getting a lot of use and that's okay. Uh, we needed to have them there. Um, they're not getting a lot of use because it's so simple. Uh, it's very much like when you go out and you buy a smartphone, who really reads through uh, the details of the, the packet? And a lot of times you don't even uh, get instructions anymore because they're just intuitive and people figure them out. Uh, this tool is very much like that. Um, and we created some videos uh, because we wanted people to really see. It was more of a marketing video, uh, but it's a bit of a training video, I guess, as well. We wanted to see what the drastic change was. Um, when we first went live, uh, again, it was a soft live. We, we, um, we targeted certain users. We let them know that the tool was out there. Um, some found it on their own, which was great. Um, and uh, we were getting feedback before we even solicited feedback. So um, I think uh, that, was, that was a big change. Um, we waited about six months, so just, just about last month. We um, moved our electronic form into a, a more challenging place to find um, with the hope that, um, that folks are uh, really gonna use this new tool and, and we'll share some of the numbers that we're seeing there. But um, I would absolutely uh, recommend uh, working with Gideon Taylor uh, on the videos. They did an amazing job. It's available 24 seven. Um, we really like having that tool out there in addition to any of our slide decks that were presented. Thanks. So feedback that we received, uh, again, um, unsolicited, we were just getting feedback, which from people that we didn't expect to get feedback from. Um, this is from our, one of our nurse managers. Um, I love the simplicity of it. Um, uh, this is a nurse manager that I worked with on a regular basis. Um, and uh, this person would reach out um, with help, uh, needing help for our forms, um, simply because they wanted to get it right the first time. So we had a lot of interaction. Um, so we selected this person to be part of our soft rollout um, just to see how it would go. And um, she was only a couple forms in when this feedback came in and just said, this is improving my day, making it a lot easier. Um, and uh, really, really happy you guys um, delivered this to us. Um, this next one, we absolutely did not um, expect to get feedback from our medical group, but they're just kind of a, a, a different, um, a different breed out there. Um, they uh, they kind of do uh, things at their own pace, and uh, we got this feedback as well. I was never uh, timely with the changes, but you have made it. You've now made it so easy. So uh, we were constantly reaching out to our medical group when they had to fill out a form that went on the bottom of their list, and it would sit on the bottom of the list sometimes for days and weeks. Um, we now made it so easy that um, they're, they're much more timely. We did not expect that. We're happy that that happened. Um, and we have a host of feedback like this. From a metrics perspective, we rolled out our about 80% of the functionality in phase one. Um, we still have uh, a few more items that we want to put in there and we're just waiting for um, the right time and, and prioritization to get that done. Um, but our goal is uh, to uh, complete 100% of our job changes um, in this form, and we would love to do that by the end of next fiscal year. We now have 800 users, um, over 800 users, and um, we just surpassed at the end of September 5,000 transactions uh, in the first uh, seven months of Go Live. So we are getting um, a huge lift from this from a productivity standpoint. We have a lot less back and forth. And for our teams that are processing um, these on the back end within our HR administration and operations area, they're now focused on the most challenging um, transactions because some of these non-value add simple transactions are just flowing right into the system. So they feel a little more enriched in their roles as well. Um, they're not dealing with some of the monotony and the back and forth of the emails and having to track all of that. Um, so uh, really a huge win-win uh, for, uh, for everyone, the end users and our back-end users. So what's next? Um, again, we want to get uh, those remaining 20% of our HR transactions out there, and we'll be working on that over our next fiscal year. Um, Lynette mentioned that our payroll team went live. Um, they were running parallel. We were partnering directly with Gideon Taylor 
Um, our IT group was working with payroll to get another eForms up and running for supplemental payments. They went live at the same time we did. They're having the same successes. Um, and as a matter of fact, later this month, they are um, discontinuing their paper and electronic um, form. And everything that will be submitted for supplemental pay will now be on the eForms effective um, end of this month. So uh, they've had great success and so much so that um, they're moving 100% to their e-forms, which, uh, which is great to see. Um, the Finance and Supply Chain Group, um, they are rolling out functionality as well. Um, I believe they're going to be going with Chartfield soon. Um, so this is not just a solution for, for HR by any means. Um, this could run across your, your PeopleSoft um, uh, enterprise solution. And um, we're looking forward to uh, some of the solutions they're going to deliver as a, as a leader. Um, I can't wait to use some of their um, functionality as well. Next slide. Okay, so um, that brings us to uh, the end of our presentation. I think there's one more slide for Q&A. Um, I don't see anything in the chat, but I might be able to open up phone lines. So let me see if I can do that for everyone. Okay, so um, you're all on mute, but if you'd like to talk to Lynette and I, have any questions, please feel free to unmute and we'll be happy to engage in conversation. Any questions out there for us? Quiet group this morning. Yeah, we, we may have folks from other time zones, so I don't know what time of day it is where you are. Um, we, we did have folks sign up from Canada, um, from Australia, um, so I know that we have a, a host of folks out there. Any, any questions for us about this technology? Um, anything you're struggling with today and, and would like to know if this could possibly help your organization as well? All right, so I, I counted to eight. I think uh, I don't see anything in chat. I think that's going to be a wrap. Um, please take a look at our contact information here. Uh, that is my email and my direct line here at work. Um, Lynette has her information there as well. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you do have any questions. And, Steve, it um, looks like one question did come in, um, wondering about how many hours you've saved um, using the forms. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's a, it's, it's a great question. Um, I can tell you that we are probably, and I'm, and I'm just guessing here because I don't think I have that metric handy, um, but I can tell you between payroll and HR, 5,000 transactions. Um, let me do some quick math and I'll give you some numbers now. So I'm going to estimate it takes us about four minutes per transaction. 20,000. I would say on average, um, right now, six months in, 300 plus hours um, have been saved so far. So uh, a lot of efficiency gained. Um, and that efficiency is, um, is just on the back end. Um, that does not include what it takes the end user to complete the, the electronic form today. Um, so again, I'll you know, if I just use the same four minutes um, to do to do that, and now they can do it in 90 seconds or two minutes, um, we've probably saved them over 150 hours as well. Great question. Anything else out there, Lynette? I think that that's all now. So now you, you can wrap it up now. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Greatly appreciate it. And um, again, we look forward to hearing from you.